this song is actually not in English. Pre-programmed chord sequences. Hey, I'm Rachel K. Collier, and in today's video, we're going to chat about sustaining creativity in music production in the meme world that is the music industry. Making music is a blessing and a curse. We love it so much, but then when we've spent a million hours perfecting our masterpieces, we need to go through the grind of releasing our music, which I would say for most independent artists can be a bit of a painful experience. So it's more important than ever that the creative process is the absolute best part of the journey. And to make sure it stays the best part of the journey, we need to allow ourselves to create completely Freely. We don't want to get caught in the trap of creating something which we think others might want to hear, pigeonholing ourselves into a certain genre, or be one of those producers who's too precious about everything and never finishes a track. If we remove all fear of rejection, we can have a lot more fun while we're making music. I've been trying to do this lately and I've been a lot more playful with my ideas, I've been finishing tracks faster, and it's just really good for my creative mental health. So I want to show you guys how I've let go of all my release expectations, all my own production rules for my latest tune, Kea Yukuhana, and see if this helps you have a little bit more fun next time you're producing in the studio. Okay, so here's the production of Kia Yukuhana. It's quite a big one, 132 tracks. I think the best place to start is probably the most obvious, and that is that this song is actually not in English. It's in Japanese. So there's a little story behind this, and that is last summer I had a sync brief where I had to produce five tracks all in different languages. Started writing this tune, and I think it was the night before I was about to submit my demos, I decided, actually, I kind of like this, I want to keep it back for my RKC project. So how did I write the lyrics? I hopped on to ChatGBT and typed in there, write me a metaphorical love song in Japanese. And it came out with these lovely lyrics. So I wrote this little melody, sent it over to one of my moderators in my Discord, who's become a very good friend of mine. She lived in Japan for a little while, so I thought I'll send them to her and check if they're good. She actually replied and said, no, they're completely wrong and I don't sound convincing at all. So I ended up asking her if she wanted to sing it. So this is Saruri singing the little phrase. <laughs> She's actually from Belgium and speaks Thai, French, Japanese, probably Welsh, many languages. She's a very talented vocalist and it's been really cool to work with her on this. Check her out in the verse 2 section. Saruri so also added some awesome Japanese parts. So whilst I was working on the song, I actually got advised against creating a tune in Japanese. I have no presence in Japan and it will not be able to be pitched to any English speaking playlists. But hey ho, I didn't care. I thought it sounded cool. I wanted to finish it. And of course it's out now for the world. I've actually found it a really fresh experience producing with lyrics in a different language. So much so that I've made another song with Sally where I've sung English and she's sung in French and we're gonna mix it together. I also hosted a listening party where the brief was to write not in your native language and there were some incredible track submissions. So it turns out by complete coincidence I was going to Japan in May. My new release was going to be in Japanese so we also shot a music video in Tokyo, something we never would have done if I hadn't have written a Japanese tune. Next up, let's chat about the chorus of the song, which is a little vocal chant written and sung by me. So whilst I was writing this, I was questioning the whole time, is this a ridiculous idea? But I just decided to let those thoughts disappear and continue through and see how it would come out. 
I actually did it using Ableton's Looper performance device, and it meant that I could loop up multiple tracks within a very short space of time. Let's turn off all the effects and check it out. Turn on all the effects. I did think, what the hell have I come up with? But it just made me feel good. So I kept it and then it's ended up being the main hook of the song. So here's a super quick demo on how to make a vocal chant with Looper. Empty audio track here, double click, bring looper in. Let's set the monitoring to in. Let's press play on the track so looper gets in with the tempo and knows what we're doing. And then we're gonna hit this little record button here too. Let's make a loop, make a loop, make a loop. Let's make a loop, make a loop, make a loop. Let's make a loop, make a loop, make a loop. Let's make a loop, make a loop, make a loop. Let's make a loop, make a loop, make a loop. Let's make a loop, make a loop, make a loop. Let's make a loop, make a loop, make a loop. Let's make a loop, make a loop, make a loop. Fifth time now. Let's make a loop. It's still recording. Make a loop. Let's make a loop, make a loop, make a loop. Fifth time now. Let's make a loop. It's still and it's going to keep recording until we press Let's play button again. Loop, make a loop, make a loop. So what we've got here then is a really thick vocal just stacked instantly. Drag and drop, and here it is. And then obviously we can do loads of cool stuff like reverse it. Ooh, look at him, ooh, look at him. What's it? Hit shift it down if we want. Add some reverb. Ooh, look at him, ooh, look at him. What's it? So a really fun one to try if you want to make a vocal chant texture fast. So I just want to interrupt the video here to chat about today's sponsor, which is myself and Mary Spender. We have a brand new songwriting course which covers our songwriting processes from beginning to end. Now I go into lots of detail here on how I combine my songwriting and production and try to give you guys as many song starter ideas and production ideas to help you get from A to B. We cover the songwriting fundamentals, harmony, melody and lyrics and then we also go into more detail on vocal arrangement, vocal delivery, vocal production and finishing your demos. So would love it so much if you fancy checking that out. I'm writing and producing in Ableton Live like I am here in my videos. Mary's using Ableton and a little bit of Logic producing with her guitar. So go have a little look. There's $50 off with the code in my description. That would be awesome. Thank you. Next up, get someone else to write your chords or use a chord machine. This is the Roland Ira J6. I've chatted about it in a few videos now. This little thing does loads of stuff, but one of my favorite things about it is the pre-programmed chord sequences. There's absolutely loads of them in all sorts of genres, and that's how I came up with the chord sequence for Kia Yukuhana. I originally played it on the Juno 106 from Rolling Cloud. Added a little Jupiter. And then I sent the MIDI to my Prophet and got loads more Prophet sounds to get this huge kind of big chord stack. This little B send here, I'll solo it for you guys. It sounds really messy by itself. It's just a little Ableton stock preset here, Echo Grains. I love the vibe this crunchy echo gives it. I've never actually made a synth stack this big before, but I think it sounds cool in the full instrumental drop, maximum energy for the song. Now I just need to learn to play the riff live. So definitely check out the little Roland Ira J6 chord machine or the online one to give yourself some more chord inspiration. I definitely wouldn't have come up with this kind of sequence. The inversions are not what I play naturally on the piano. And also the MIDI packs. I mean, they've been rinsed. They're boring. You've got to drag the MIDI in, move it around. We all hate the advert. So a chord machine, I think, is a way upgrade from that. 
that. Right, let's jump back to my production session here at Kia Yukohana. I'm gonna talk about something that comes up a lot in my one-to-one -one production mentoring sessions. I do these over on my Patreon. I offer a couple of slots a month. So if you wanna have a one-to-one -one sesh with me, then head over to my Patreon and sign yourselves up. So the question I get is about splice and can I use splice loops? Now, of course you can use splice loops. Personally, myself, I haven't for a long time. I've wanted to program my own drums. I've wanted to prove myself as a music producer. I felt like using loops was cheating. But as the years have gone by, I've gained a lot more confidence as a music producer. I found that I'm loving experimenting with the splice drum loops. I feel like it can help you imagine what the best groove for your song would be, and it can also help you get from A to B in the writing process much quicker. You've got to remember that by the time you've added 5,000 other parts in your productions, very few are going to recognize that hi-hat loop you might have loaded in from Splice. So for Kei Yukahana, I was in the zone, I wanted to write quickly, I wanted to chuck some loops in to help me get from A to B. I didn't want to be sitting there fiddling, choosing all the sounds and programming. So here we go, check out one of the main loops I grabbed from Splice, which fills out my drum groove. It's a tops tribal loop. 126 beats per minute and then mixed in with the rest of my drums take it out again it really misses that vibe so thanks to TSOT2 for that awesome loop I've got another one here MTD drum and what I've done with this one is I've actually pitch shifted up 12 semitones and I've got a little frequency shifter on it as well for some movement between sections. But check it out by itself. In verse 2 it's keeping a nice movement along with the kick drum. less energetic but I really don't think in the grand scheme of things anyone is going to be picking up on my tribal and hi-hat loop and saying oh RKC's just use splice I also heard in a brilliant music production podcast the other day called tape notes you have to check this out if you want to listen to music producers and artists chat about how they made their songs it is so good Fred again was on there and he was saying for Delilah, one of the tunes he made, he actually exhausted every groove so he could hear what was best, which I found nuts. But imagine that. Imagine sitting there and programming every different feel of groove, hip hop or God knows what. Mind you, he's a pro finger drummer, so he probably just finger drummed it and it sounded great. I couldn't do that, but I could use Splice to listen to how a different groove could elevate my track. So don't be afraid of it, use it, Manipulate it, process it in combination with your stems and everything will be good. So by experimenting with different languages, vocal chants, different techniques, chord machines, playing around with loops, I had so much fun creating Kia Yukohana even after I was told don't bother releasing this because it's in another language it's not going to be well received. So I would love to know what do you think of the track? Do you think it was worth releasing? If you've got any Japanese mates please play it to them, see what they think of the lyrics. I want to say thanks so much to Saruri for featuring and writing, singing on this. She is such a babe. I love her so much. It's streaming everywhere now. Play it to all your friends. I'll be eternally grateful. So there we have it. There's another little video from me. I really hope this helps you to be a bit more playful when you're in the studio next. Just try Try anything, who cares, no one cares, it's all about you, your creative journey, make sure you are having the best fun when you're in the studio. Come and check out my Patreon community if you want more from me, exclusive behind the scenes videos, samples, stems, all this kind of thing. Not to mention the community, we've got loads of live events going on, a real life one happening in Berlin this August. Thanks so much in advance for checking it out, otherwise go stream Kei Yukihana and I'll see you next time. Mwah.